know that the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. I wanted to be a little bit more original than to use a phrase that you probably heard a thousand times. But what's a better phrase than that? We can't do better. A shocking admission from former President Donald Trump, on the other hand. And also, speaking of drag queens, can, can we stop with the grooming stuff? Can you stop talking about that? Drag queens are not at a school to groom your kids. Stop it. And even if they were, most of them kids gonna get shot at school. It ain't no problem. Don't groan, pass legislation. <laughs> like they boobs gonna bother me. I'm like, I'm like Mitch McConnell. I ain't got no soul. Comedians like Roy Wood Jr. point out the hypocrisy for all of us to see. Now, America has shown its shadow and we are stuck with Mallorcas for six more weeks. Thanks to the insipid idiots in Congress, in the GOP. Good hmm. luck, guys. Way to go. Way to show the American people you can accomplish something. But I hope you're happy you expelled me. Mwah. Bye. On the topic of George Santos. The overlooked purpose of tonight's dinner is to award scholarships to students who have shown great achievements in journalism. That's right. <laughs> These brave young souls are the future of the industry. And I'd like to stop right now and, con and congratulate tonight's top scholarship recipient, Arizona State senior George Santos. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, George couldn't be here tonight. He's auditioning for RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> That's my bad. Wood hilariously roasts him. We've done things like ban critical race theory in our K through 12 schools. What you do not do is you do not distort American history to try to advance your current ideological agenda. In an instance of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis performing the epic act of the pot calling the kettle black. If there's one person that could use a scandal, it's Ron DeSantis. That boy is just running around just passing every controversial law he can think of, thinking that's going to activate voters. That's not how you activate voters in this country, Ron. Everybody know how you do politics. This is America. We don't pass laws. You make a promise to voters, and then you don't do it. That's what the great leaders in this room understand. You know how to make things not happen. Wood saying this to the faces of legislators is not just ballsy. It is simultaneously undoubtedly true. Bravo. White supremacy, that's the problem. This is a hoax. After Tucker Carlson's ouster from Fox News. Tonight, we are all unified under one thing, and that's scandal. <laughs> Scandals. Scandals have been devouring careers this year. The untouchable Tucker Carlson is out of a job. Yeah, okay. Some people celebrate it. But to Tucker's staff, I want you to know that I know what you're feeling. I work at The Daily Show, so I too have been blindsided by the sudden departure of the host of a fake news program. <laughs> Tucker got caught up. Got caught up like that dude from Vanderpump Rules. Tucker Carlson is the first host to get fired from Fox News for something that's only partially about how he treats women. That's progress. He shattered the ceiling. Wood Jr. went in as well. George Lemon had been with the network for nearly two decades and hosted his own primetime show for eight years. He was on the air on Monday morning before tweeting the news of his firing, saying he was blindsided. The CNN This Morning anchor signing off his show Monday. Just hours later tweeting, I was informed this morning by my agent that I have been terminated by CNN, adding, I would have thought that someone in management would have had the decency to tell me directly. I am stunned. CNN then with a tweet of its own, refuting Lemon's account, calling it inaccurate, writing, he was offered an opportunity to meet with management, but instead released a statement on Twitter. Don Lemon would even catch a stray. Speaking of Don Lemon is out of a job. <laughs> Don 
Don Lemon. My dog, Don Lemon. Don Lemon released a statement saying he got fired from CNN. Then CNN released a statement saying that they offered Don a meeting. They had to part ways, because Don Lemon can't even accurately report a story about Don Lemon. <laughs> I still think that Don deserved more, CNN. That ain't how you fire somebody. It's messed up. How funny is it that you work in the news, then watch on the news that you got fired from the news? Hi, Jeffrey. Hello, Allison. It's been a while. It has been a while, indeed. As did this dude. Don Lemon is now the most obnoxious guy in the history of CNN. That's not fair. Even Jeffrey Tubin looking at Don Lemon like, ooh, he rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> But I ultimately understand why CNN did what they did. I get it, it's about morals. There should be no place on air for someone who speaks with wild disregard that doesn't consider the blowback to their coworkers or their company. Thankfully, CNN has taken steps in the right direction. They got rid of Don Lemon, and they've now given a show to Charles Barkley. <laughs> to Charles Barkley's co-host, Gail King, we say good luck. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a good show. The whole show is gonna be Charles Barkley saying something crazy, then Gail King looking into the camera, Charles. <laughs> Charles. He also predicted this to a T. First of all, I'm just gonna say this. If I see a black person walking around with Trump mugs, I'm gonna punch him in the face. Charles. I uh, know, Gail, 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 Gail. You, I, you really can't say that, because A, you don't mean that. You, oh, I mean that sincerely. <laughs> I'm going to just tell you something. And then you will be arrested for assault. And then what? I'm going to bail myself what? out and go celebrate. <laughs> if I still Don't no, encourage seriously. him. Don't encourage him. Now we have breaking news. Former President Trump will stand trial in the hush money case against him starting April 15th. Trump's team had tried to further delay that trial, arguing they needed more time to review newly released evidence, but the judge rejected that argument. Meanwhile, an appeals court has ruled that former President Trump can post a smaller bond than the $464 million originally imposed in his New York civil fraud trial. Back on this guy. You can't follow Trump scandals. There's too many Trump scandals to keep up with. Keeping up with Trump scandals is like watching Star Wars movies. You gotta watch the third one to understand the first one. Then the, you, got, you can't miss the second one because it's got Easter eggs for the fifth one. Donald Trump is the only politician whose scandals got spinoffs on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> but the Trump arrest, it made everybody question what they believe. You thought you leaned one way politically, then Trump got locked up. Everybody started waffling. Put Republicans between a rock and a hard place. Donald Trump. Got locked up and for years. All Republicans, all y'all been saying for years, we gotta get tough on crime. Trump got arrested. We meant black crime. Wood Jr. exposes the hypocrisy amongst many in D.C. Well, we've got another eyebrow-raising revelation tonight about Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas and his financial dealings with a billionaire buddy. Last week, ProPublica revealed that virtually every year for decades, Thomas has been treated to luxury vacations by billionaire conservative donor Harlan Crow, including trips on his private jet and super yacht worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, which, crucially, Thomas never disclosed in his uh, financial disclosures. Now we've learned there are other financial dealings between the two men that Thomas also didn't disclose. In 2014, Crow bought several properties in this quiet residential neighborhood in Savannah, Georgia, that had belonged to Clarence Thomas and his relatives, including a house where Thomas's mother was still living and two vacant house lots. You thought Roy Wood Jr. wouldn't address this dude either? Get real. Harlan Crow is flying Clarence Thomas all over the world on unreported trips like an Instagram model taking Clarence to the Maldives and the beaches and all. Pay for his mama's house, this billionaire. Pay for Clarence Thomas' mama's house. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give it up to billionaires. Billionaires, boy, y'all y'all are relentless. Y'all always come up with something new to buy. <laughs> like, just when you think of everything you could buy on Earth, a billionaire will come up with a new thing. Y'all buy space rockets, you bought Twitter. This man bought a Supreme Court justice. Do you understand how rich you have to be to buy a Supreme, a black one on top of that? There's only two in stock. 
and Harlan Crow owns half the inventory. <laughs> we can all see Clarence Thomas, but he belongs to billionaire Harlan Crow. And that's what an NFT is. All right, y'all, before we get into it, if there are any stories we missed, if there are any that you would like to submit, get at me and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, DMs are open. And please, if you can, become a channel member to help sustain us and or go to tyt.com slash join. This is something that I wanted to revisit because even though it's 10 months old at this point, all of this is still happening. Whether it is the Trump scandals, Tucker Carlson launching his show on X, Don Lemon having the interview with Elon Musk and then getting his contract canceled by by Twitter, no one calls it X, by Twitter, because it was all stemming from the fallout with CNN, the pleas that the Biden administration is making while France is protesting the retirement age and that hypocrisy in and of itself. Jeffrey Tubin still being welcomed with open arms and Ron DeSantis, who is now no longer a presidential uh, candidate, but rather continuing to make those in his state suffer. All of this sadly remains prevalent. It shouldn't be, but as Tupac says, that's the way it is. This reporter has been working on a story about me for two years. After two years of trying to get me to sit with him for an interview, he contacts LSU on Tuesday as we were getting ready for the first round game of this tournament with more than a dozen questions, demanding a response by Thursday, right before we're scheduled to tip off. Are you kidding me? LSU coach Kim Mulkey is clearly feeling the heat. It was just an attempt to prevent me from commenting and an attempt to distract us from this tournament. It ain't gonna work, buddy. Unfortunately, this is part of a pattern that goes back years. I told this reporter two years ago that I didn't appreciate the hit job he wrote on Brian Kelly. And that's why I wasn't going to do an interview with him. Good sourcing and sound reporting is not a hit job, coach. Onward. Former players have told me that the Washington Post has contacted them and offered to let them be anonymous in a story if they'll say negative things about me. The Washington Post has called former disgruntled players to get negative quotes to include in their story. They're ignoring the 40 plus years of positive stories that, that people or they have heard from people about me. But you see, reporters who give a megaphone to a one-sided embellished version of things aren't trying to tell the truth. They're trying to sell newspapers and feed the click machine. This sounds a lot like this. You've said repeatedly that you think that some of the equipment that governors are requesting, they don't actually need. You said New York might need, I, that I might not need 30,000. You said it on I Sean Hannity's on, Fox News. You said you know, that why you don't, might- Why don't you some, people act? Let, let me ask you. You said why some don't state, you act? Why don't you act in a little more positive? It's always trying to my get question you. To you. Get is, you, get you. And you know what? That's why nobody trusts the media anymore. My That's question why to you people, is, how is that going to impact? Excuse me, you didn't hear me. That's why you used to work for the Times, and now you work for somebody else. Look, let me tell you something. Be nice. Don't Mr. Be President, threatening. my question Don't is... Don't be threatening. Playing defense through unfounded attacks over and over again. This is exactly why people don't trust journalists and the media anymore. It's these kinds of sleazy tactics and hatchet jobs that people are just tired of. I'm fed up and I'm not gonna let the Washington Post attack this university, this awesome team of young women I have, or me without a fight. Ah yes, more attacking of the media. Easy target, well done. I've hired the best defamation law firm in the country and i will sue the washington post if they publish a false story about me not many people are in a position to hold these kind of journalists accountable but i am 
and I'll do it. Kind of a threat there from Mulkey. Mike Sando of The Athletic would see this and write, sometimes a reporter before publication presents a non-cooperative subject like Kim Mulkey with a questions list, at which point the subject gains understanding of scope rather than answer. Sometimes threats are made, usually privately, as last recourse. Powerful people equals used to getting their way. In addition, the reporter who said she did a hit piece on Brian Kelly, it was an article about the harsh financial conditions in the state of Louisiana. That article juxtaposed Brian Kelly, football coach, his massive salary against the harsh financial conditions that Baton Rouge's residents and LSU students face. That's a ridiculous thing to defend. And not a hit piece in the slightest. That dude was spitting facts. In turn, likely, it made Coach Mulkey that much more unrelatable. What Coach did was the opposite for many. She's giving free promotion to an article many probably would have ignored. Jason McCallum would tweet, whatever this is, the one thing I'm absolutely certain of is that the Washington Post is completely unafraid of this insane basketball coach and any threats of a lawsuit. They took down a president of the United States one time. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Sports Network. Kim, obviously not the start that you guys wanted today. Just wanted to ask if externally, if you guys felt like you maybe were distracted a touch and, and just talk about how your team was able to, to just weather that, that early start. No, listen, man, I'm not, we're not going to let one sleazy reporter distract us from what we're trying to do. Absolutely not. My kids didn't even know I said that yesterday. That team's not involved in this. They were in shock when they saw all that on the internet. I don't take that stuff to my team. She'd then say this after LSU's win, controversially, over Middle Tennessee. Hilariously, the reporter would later identify himself with this tweet and would write a two-word caption that read, Hit piece? We have covered Kim Mulkey here, and we have gone over her mishaps. Everyone has them. The problem is hers are just terrible mishaps to the degree that they are not only unrelatable, but you cannot defend them. So I just want to go over a few things that we heard. I took a few notes because this is really blown up, but I believe the correct context has not been met. So the first thing is, she is reading a statement, which is something she never does. You have to understand, if, if you followed women's hoops, how insane this is. She's the coach that's like, I shoot from the hip and I tell it like it is, and I'm going to MF you if I have to. Like, She will never read a prepared statement. So the fact that she did is eye-opening. Secondly, she says that it is a hit piece. If someone is working on a story for two years, here's what I know. It ain't a hit piece. It's good journalism. It's good sourcing. And to get into that, by the way, saying that she had no time to respond, I find that to be interesting because she opened up that very same sentence by saying, this reporter has been trying to interview me for two years. <laughs> so what it sounds like is you kept putting off this person for two years. And now that the piece is finally going to come out after they presented you, since you wouldn't get back to them and let them interview you with a list of questions, you might have an understanding of where they're coming from, though she also may not. We haven't seen the article yet. We don't know what deets are in there, but this is a woman and Better yet, any person who comes out in this way after putting off meeting with this media person for that many years and then saying, we had no time to respond. Bro, are you kidding me? You had 24 months to meet the moment. And now that you feel like the walls are caving in, you're trying to play the victim. And this is not a person who ever um, will not fire back but she is doing it now as a last ditch effort. She also said this on sourcing, saying former players contacted me about the story, granting anonymity. Yeah, 
Yeah, that because look at your response before the story came out. I believe people would be granted the condition of anonymity for fear of retribution, for fear of what you will do to their career. Clearly, it is clear if anyone crosses you, they are cooked. So out of anything, she's giving credence to people wanting anonymity. On top of this, I wrote a few notes on this as well. Let's go over some sourcing. It's not that allowing uh, anonymity is for a negative story. It's granting anonymity if they aren't comfortable putting their name on it for what you'll do to them. In addition, you're showing what many don't understand, the ethics of journalism. She's attempting to paint this all as fake news. It's a hoax. They're writing a story on me and granting anonymity because they're making it up. That's not true. In addition, it goes to show on the surface of the ethics of journalism. It goes to show Mulkey and all of her defenders don't have a clue what it takes to get a story to print. Let me speak on that as well. The Washington Post has lawyers reviewing all of this. They have fact checkers reviewing all of this. Why? Because a lawsuit would open them up to not only financial damages, but credibility. It has to be bulletproof in order to go to print. And it probably is. So it just goes to show a lot. And we've talked about the mishaps previously, right? We've talked about how she was very evidently, clearly sick in a press room. And she ended her press conference by saying, sorry if y'all get sick from me. I ain't testing for COVID. So if you go home to your families over Thanksgiving, get them sick, you can blame me. Ha, ha, ha. That was bad. When... During the NCAA tournament, coming to a close a few years ago, she was playing with her mask intentionally to make it seem like it was the worst thing to ever happen to her. And then she said, even if players contract COVID, they should just be playing. It doesn't matter who they get sick. It doesn't matter who they take out in society where we've lost a million, millions of people. It doesn't matter. She just wants people playing no matter what. She said that it was unfair to the kids which is a ridiculous thing to say, knowing how deadly it is. She mandated, according to a report, that her players go visit the Trump White House, which was also pretty eye-opening. Um, she has... Uh, there's a report that she told Brittany Griner to keep her sexuality private. The argument can be made that, according to the school handbook of Baylor, that it is... Uh, wrong for someone to be gay on campus when there was a huge essay scandal involving Baylor's football program when Art Bryles was the head coach. She went in front of a home crowd at one of their games and said, if anybody tells you they're not going to send their kid to Baylor, you punch them in the face. She later apologized for that remark. But it was very clear what her intent was. In addition, when Brittany Griner was detained in Russia, she refused to say anything about it. This is a player that helped win her national championships and elevate her to the spotlight of women's college hoops and basketball overall. And she didn't say a single word for Brittany Griner. Not one. Let me also say this. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have learned through how we have covered the Brett Favre Mississippi case. If she sues for defamation, she is opening herself up to discovery. I sincerely doubt that she would want to do such a thing. 